Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As we recite durud to connect to the Holy Prophet والسلام, how do we connect to the great Sahabas radiallahu anhu? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. That's a good question. How do you connect to the Sahabi Kiram? Good. You see, traditionally, in traditional Islam, you would also celebrate the Urs of the great Sahabas. You would. You would celebrate the Mevlut. Oh, today they're saying, for example, which a few, uh, like a week ago it passed, is the birth of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. We remember, so we try to understand and read his sirah, his life, what he has done in his life, what he has left behind, his legacy. Same thing. Oh, today is the death anniversary, say, of Hazrat Umar. No, we remember Hazrat Umar. So every time you do that, or any of the great Sahabis, you are connecting yourself to them. That is one way of doing it. You're connecting yourself to them. Our Shaykh has told us, pick one Sahabi that you feel close to, that you connect to. Any Sahabi, the 124,000, pick one. Then learn about that Sahabi. Learn. Try to find out as much as possible. Stay close to that one. There are different secrets with that too. So, it will be good if you do that. This is practical. We are not entering into mysticism. Okay? In these days, mysticism will bring you to confusion and fitna. We're dealing with things that you can actually use. Then let the mystical part to take care of itself. It doesn't matter. What does it matter to us when we pray what light comes? This light come or this angel come or that angel come? What does it matter? We're Naqshbandis. It doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is that we pray. What matters to us is that we make zikr. If Allah wants to give, that's his business. If he doesn't want to give, that's his prerogative. But what is our duty? to do. So concentrate on that. Then that time we're not doing it in order to get payment too. Allah is not our business partner. Don't trade this religion. Treat this religion like it is a business. You're doing it in order to do this, to take this, to see. No, it's not necessary. <laughs> Certain things may come to you that time, definitely. Some people, they are open. They may see that's a different matter. And those ones we know who is real and who is not to. Because everything has its proof and everything has um, everything has a proof. If you are claiming, for example, that you've seen angels, there is a proof for that written all over your body and in your dealing in the world. If you say you see other things, must be, there must be an effect. If there is a cause, there must be an effect. Huh? So, why are we saying this? Because so many people claim, but we see there is no proof. Holy Prophet ﷺ, when he saw Hazrat Jibreel ﷺ, did he have proof? Physically, what happened to him? Was he going back so happy, telling his wife, Oh, I saw angel. What was his proof? He got sick. What? What are you saying, Maulana? <laughs> sick. He got sick. He got sick. <coughs> so, because it is not easy for this physical body now to be in the presence of something that is not from this world. Okay, so if you want to make claims, make sure that it's true. May Allah keep us in safety, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Afiyar